All right, what up everybody? This is Mr. Stan from supersimplephysics.com coming at you with another video. This time we're talking about work and power. So work is the um, transfer of energy from one thing to another. So if you do work on something, you're giving energy to it, but you're losing that energy yourself. And power is a measurement of how fast that happens. So we're talking about how you can calculate the values for work and power. Work is measured in joules, just like energy is, and power is measured in watts. Okay, so power is the easy one. If you know the work, all you do is divide work by time and you get the power. So obviously a small time means you get work done in a smaller time, it means you have more power. Uh, if it takes a longer time, it means you have less power. But the problem is you have to know work. If you don't know work, you can't divide it by time to get power. So there are three ways to find work and which way you use depends on what you've been given. So in this series of videos, we'll talk about how to find work and there's three methods that you can use. Uh, in this video, we'll go over method one. Okay, method one is easiest. Uh, so when you have the right information, uh, you can use this and find work very easily. Work is equal to force times distance, right? You just multiply those two numbers together if you have them. Uh, and distance meaning the distance that the force pushed something, right? So if you like push on a box for, and you push the box three meters, then you can just take the force that you used on the box multiplied by three meters, and that will give you your work. This equation does come with some drawbacks, right? It's not all, you can't always use it. Uh, this equation works simply if you have a force and distance that are in the same direction. Okay, so if you push on something and it moves in the same direction that you're moving it, I mean, sorry, the same direction that you're pushing on it, then you can just simply multiply those two numbers and get the work. If the force that you're using and the, and the direction that the other thing is moving are different, then you have to do something more complicated that's beyond the scope of this video. All right, so if force and distance are the same direction and force is constant, you can use this equation right here, force times time, sorry, force times distance equals work. So let's um, look at an example. Here's Mr. Stickman, and Mr. Stickman is pushing on a car. He pushes with a force of 500 newtons for eight meters. It takes 40 seconds to push the car this distance. So because he's pushing forward and the car is moving forward, we can use the equation force times distance equals work. So the force that he uses is 500 newtons and the distance is eight meters. You would multiply those together uh, to get 4,000 joules, okay? So he did 4,000 joules of work. And what that means is he lost 4,000 joules of his energy uh, and he gave the car 4,000 joules of energy. That energy was turned into kinetic energy as the car was rolling. Now, how much power did he have? Well, now that we have work, we can just divide by the time. It took him 40 seconds to go this distance, so we'll divide by 40. 4,000 divided by 40 is 100. Okay, so 100 is his power. And power is a measure of how fast energy can go from one object to another. So the more power he has, the more ability he has to give his energy to something else and, and cause the other thing to gain energy. Okay, so that's method number one. Now, this works good, but if the force is not constant, we're gonna have to do something else. And so we'll learn about something else you can do uh, in video two. We'll talk about the second method. I'll see you then.